What I'd like to do now is show you how to make a puta, otherwise called an inhalator. Now both, both of these terms are a bit confusing, so I'll explain. This is a puta. By the way, if you've been looking at the book, you'll find all about putas on page 55. And a puta is a device for catching very small insects. You do this, you go, and you suck in. And when you suck in, the insect is drawn into this container here. Now let's just take it apart and see how. This piece of tubing here, attached to the lid of this film canister, has a piece of cloth. And that stops any insects getting down my throat. So, you've got a piece of tubing here that you suck the insect in through, you've got a container for it to go into, and you've got a lid so that until I take the lid off, the insect is held safely inside this container. When I'm ready, when I've got what I was after, I open this, I tap it first like that to get the insects down to the bottom, I take the lid off, I get my container they're going to go into, and I go tap, tap, tap like that. There they are in the container, put the lid back on, and I've now got them to look at. They're alive, they haven't been hurt, and when I'm finished with them, I can let them go. I'm here to show you how to make one of these with a film canister, in case you can find some clear film canisters around your house. These days, of course, with uh, digital photography, film canisters are getting fairly rare, so I'll come back to that in a moment. There is another way to do it. But there is basically what we're going to have. Lid, piece of tubing with a filter, small piece of tubing, and a container, which can be sealed shut. But I remember not to drill too hard. I don't want to make a hole right through that goes down so that the drill goes straight through into the table below. So here is my drill, and I'm going to make a small hole. By the way, I picked this, I should have said, I picked this because it's the same size as the tubing so it should make a nice neat fit. So, quick hole in here, put some pressure on, drill like that, just very gently, and there is a hole in the lid. Now we need a hole in the bottom. You could do it this way, that's the way you generally think of doing it, but that's bad because there's nothing supporting the, the bottom, so you, you do it this way around. Put it down in the bottom, and run it a couple of times like that just to clean out the hole. We now have nice clean holes both sides, get rid of the bits of plastic, and we're ready to go. That's the end of the drill. The next thing we need is a bit of cloth. I used a very disreputable old handkerchief. I just chopped a bit off it before I left home today, and I'm going to cut a small piece out. And what we want to do is cover this over the end. This is going to be the sucking tube here. Just a matter of wrapping it around like that nice and neatly and a bit of sticky tape. I generally find two or three bits of sticky tape is the best because sometimes the first one doesn't quite hold it properly and doesn't get a grip on the plastic but you'll notice if you can see there that there's just cloth on the end there's no sticky tape over the end so I can still suck through that. I've got a thick bit here where the cloth and the tape is I don't want to try and put that through the hole so I'll take the other end of the tube and I push it through there like that and it's a beautiful tight fit so I bring that down like that, and there is most of my pooter ready to go. What am I missing? A bit of tubing there. Well, this is a bit long, so I'll chop a bit off. Not that much. You can buy this sort of tubing from most hardware stores. Get about a three to five millimeter tubing, see what's there, uh, and you'll find you've normally got something that goes fairly well. It takes a little bit of force just to get that to go in there. Now. This is bad design at the moment. Notice how the sucker bit and the tube are close together. We don't want that. So I'll bring this up out of the way. What I want is for the insect to go into this, into this area here and then not immediately get stuck on the cloth. I want it just to fall down into the bottom of, of the container. So there is a pooter. When you don't have any film containers, you drink some water. At the end of that, you have a water bottle cleaned off. There was a label on there which I took off because I want to be able to see what's inside there. And I've simply done the same thing. Two holes side by side in the top here. I can take these out and make this more visible. I simply took the lid, put it down like that, got the drill. I don't want to drill this too hard now because it's already drilled. 
two holes drilled like that. Boom! We've got holes in there. Now we simply take our two bits of plastic. Just takes a bit of practice and there you have all of the bits you need for a boot up or inhalator. Now, when do you use this? Well, all sorts of things. At night, if you hung a sheet up or something like that and you put a light near it to attract small insects, you can now come along and I'm going to go over onto the wall now and catch this dark bit here, which will pretend it's an insect. I go like that. And now the insect is down in here in my container. When I'm ready, tap the side to make sure everything is down the bottom. All the ones that are scampering up have gone back down the bottom. Quickly open my container, tap them in there, and put the lid on. Now I can look at them. A hand lens is one of the things you need to examine anything closely, and there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. You don't do it like that, which is what people normally think of doing. You hold this close, and you bring this up until it comes into focus, which it is there. So you can see if I move around sideways, you can see that's about the distance that you need. And from there you can see what's involved. These little hand lenses are quite cheap, and they fold over so the lens doesn't get scratched. If you have something in here, you can in fact look at it like this. You can examine it on the side, and having seen it, you can then let it go. But you will have seen a lot more of life that way than you would otherwise. And the main thing is, you haven't done any harm to the animal. Now the explorers used things like that. I don't think they've used pooters. I don't think they've been invented then. So they mostly used brushes to pick up things. But they needed to keep them nice and safe and secure because the whole point was to actually go out, get stuff that hadn't been seen before, and collect it. We're talking the 1830s, the 1840s here, the time before Charles Darwin came up with the origin of species. Darwin was able to do that when he did because there was such a wide collection of life forms available for examination. It wasn't just Darwin, there were lots of other people thinking along the same lines. They couldn't have done it without the collections that were made. So the explorers went out mainly in the hope that they would find great land for farming or great mineral wealth or something like that, or interesting new trees which would make dyes that could be used, something that would be industrially valuable. But along the way they collected specimens. And in some ways the most important thing for the future of science in the world was those collections that they made.